I thought I'd find myself in a bloody baby store. <laughs> I know. It's like a supermarket. They've got everything. Toys, prams, sterilizers. It's mental. Yeah. That's time doing a financial haul now. See, your new mums want all this stuff. It gives them peace of mind. Everything's got to be just perfect, you know. What about this? No, we'll get him something to wear. What about this? He's a wee cold, for God's sake. You grow into it. Aye, in about 12 bloody years. <laughs> I'll get him a wee sleep suit. There's your change. Oh. So, which one of you is a new grandfather? No, it's my pal that's had a baby. Your pal? Aye, <laughs> he's 70. It was in the paper. Oh, I read about that. And they'll have the work cut out for them there, eh? Oh, half, <laughs> aye. Cheery bye. Cheery bye. Oh, Jack, look at this. £125. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clown. <laughs> it is a clown. It's, it's obvious it's a clown. You're a clown. Have you seen the price of cots? I can't tell you as much I've fought to in baby stuff this week. I thought he makes savings somewhere. Has, has Francis seen this? <laughs> Not yet, no. There's splinters sticking with it in Everton town. <laughs> what the hell's this? Just bend that back in. <laughs> Francis is going to take one look at that and order you to smash it up. How was she? My father built my cot. It's a tradition. Your father was a joiner! Oh, shut up. <laughs> Here, here's an idea. Why don't you get a bit of string and wrap all this shite up and make a mobile for the wee baby? <laughs> yeah. Tam Mullen, 0200? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, that, that, that sounds nice. And who would be paying for that? <laughs> business class? Well, I, of course, business class, I, I. A room? No, 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 no. You see, we need a suite because we'll be taking the baby with us. Right then. I'll speak to you in the morning. Where's my best side, boys? That side? Or that side? What are you talking about? I'm going to be on Lorraine Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell does Lorraine Kelly want the likes of you? Um, Francis is Britain's oldest mother. It's news. They're going to take us down and pit us up in a fancy hotel. Honestly, Tam, see if you fell in the Clyde. You'd come out with a salmon in your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to look at my good suit. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine Kelly. I'll tell you this, Jack, Tam may be down there rubbing shoulders with the famous, but he cannot do what we're doing. Do what? We're not doing anything. Exactly. Tam's not going to have any time to just do nothing. Sit, relax, with a book and a can, feet up. No, no way a newborn. See, what Tam's done is he's took the natural order and he snapped it. I mean, the way it's supposed to work is you're born, you grow up, you get a wife, then you have wains, then you work your tits off bringing them up. Then they leave, you get to sit in your house, smash them. Aye. Tam's got it all upside down. I mean, what age is he? Seventy? New wane be Christ. I mean, what's he going to do, right? When that boy's sixteen and all full of himself and gain it, I'm going out to get steaming drunk and smash windies and sniff glue. Tam's sitting there well into his eighties, giving it no, you're no. Aye, I'm are you old bastard. You're not going to do anything about it. <laughs> Tam's like that. He gets up, arms like knitting needles. <laughs> I'll stick one on your bloody chin. <laughs> then the boy goes, sit your arse, you know, prick while I'll rifle through your pockets. <laughs> oh, you need your strength to keep a boy in line. You've got to be young. I wouldn't have swapped places with Tam for all the tea in China. No, me neither. Who's that? Hello? Hi. No, I don't know what you should do either. Piss off! <laughs> that was Tam. That's him in a hotel. 
Says he doesn't know whether to have a big steak sent up to the room, beast into the mini bar, or have a splash in the jacuzzi. the couple who've just had a lovely wee baby. Oh, yeah, Where's the news in that, I hear you ask? Well, the mother of that baby is 64 years of age and that makes her Britain's <laughs> oldest mum. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they're paying him? It's Tam we're talking about here. We'll have wangled a fee. Uh, hotels and that flight something down to London. I don't think they pay guests on the types of shows, you know. Lorraine Kelly will be hoovering all the money you took for herself. Uh, you'll be all right, aye. Uh, there'll be nothing left for any other silly bastard. Uh, yeah, she must be padded. Aye, uh, she's padded. Now we ride into the bargain. <laughs> she's all mumsy and pumpable. That drives me off my nut, Aye, uh. uh, she's my number two after Judy Finnegan. Oh, uh, wait for Christ's sake. You would take Judy Finnegan over Lorraine Kelly? That's like refusing a Ferrari and taking a Morris Minor instead. <laughs> But you're forgetting, Jack, the Morris Mine has got their big sticky headlamps. Still to come, this season's sassiest shoes with our Mark from the High Street, of course. First, though, let's meet Francis and Tam Mullen and his yeah! beautiful little baby. He's absolutely gorgeous. What have you called him? Well, he's only a week old, so we're still negotiating. Um, I like Christopher, Frederick, Crawford, and I really like Augustus. I think that sounds quite noble. But Tam doesn't agree. Oh, what name are you holding out for then, Tam? Tam. Tam? <laughs> what gives you? Oh, look, there's Big Tam and Wee Tam. Or Old Tam and Young Tam, if you like. Right. I quite like Augustus. No, Tam. Yeah. OK, Francis, what's it like being Britain's oldest mum at 64? It's quite strange. Uh, we never planned it, that's for sure. <laughs> No, no, we did not. I hope you don't mind me saying, you know, but you're both no longer young. Have you got a network of friends that'll help you out with babysitting and things? Well, it's quite tricky. I've only got my sister and she lives down the coast and Tam doesn't have any family. Uh, uh, but we've got a good pal, Isa, who I'm sure would love to babysit. That right, Isa? Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh it's official, Isa. It's been on the telly. You're first in line for a using. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If it comes to my door looking for a babysitter, I'll no be in. <laughs> so, how are you coping with the sleepless nights? Well, I'm no spring chicken myself, Lorraine, and I'm a wee bit set in my ways. I like a can of beer. Well, a few cans, really. <laughs> so, during the night, I'm generally comatose, snoring a bit. <laughs> she'll need to get up. I'll even hear it greet you. It? Uh, until we've agreed on Tam, it's getting called it. Oh! Oh, he's just gone to wee and it on national television. <laughs> OK, um, Francis. Now, there's been a lot of media attention over this birth, hasn't there? You don't hear, for example. And I'd imagine that companies have been in touch, you know, offering you complimentary baby items, things like that. Eh? So, Francis, what I really wanted to talk well, to well, you well, about... Well, well, put your foot in the brake, sweetheart. What was that about complimentary baby items? Well, when something so special, you know, like this happens, big companies fall over themselves to associate eh? their goods with, with you. So you'll get free baby items, toys, nappies, that kind of thing. Has that not happened? No. Uh, how do we go about that? Well, well I'm sure they'll be in touch. Uh, well, well, let me give you the details in case you need to get in touch. Oh, <laughs> 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 0141-946-0200. We can't really give that out. Shush, you know, sweetheart. <laughs> Tam and Francis Mullen, 25 uh, Ratlock Road, Craig Lang. Tam, you can't do that. And, and the doorbell's oh, not working, so let you give the door a chat. <laughs> 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 oh! What's that there? Visitors, are you in? Oh. Francis in. Oh, Tam. Yep. Oh, how's your wee bundle of joy then? Oh, he's grand, Jack, thanks. <laughs> oh, he's were good on the telly. <laughs> oh, he's a couple of keepsakes. Oh. <laughs> Mugs. Aye, after the maffle arrange table. I'll let you give them a round suit, they're still done. <laughs> Welcome. He's going to do us a favour, could you? Rough. Seen that coming. Look after the wane for a couple of hours. Well, we're kind of busy. Uh, well, we're going to ask Isa, but she's no in. No in? On a Thursday? <laughs> Isa! She's normally in. 
Ayşe! Bas tut! The thing is, we need to go into town to meet a media agent. A media agent? Aye. The phone's been ringing after the hook since Lorraine Kelly. Companies phoning us up wanting to do deals with their products. Nappies and that. Baby stuff. It's big. Well, how long are you going to be away? Without the wane. We're burning out in two hours. Look at these silly sound asleep, mind you. Aye, but for how long, Jack? How long? Oh, he'll be sound now for a good three or four hours. I just fed him. If he wakes, just heat up the bottle in his bag, give him it, and he'll go back over. Heating up bottles and that. Eh? <laughs> <sighs> aye, we'll do it, aye. Thanks. Aye, we'll do it. Right, is that the time? I better be getting off to the bookies. Hold the lift, you two. <laughs> To recap, we are offering two years' commitment. You'll never have to buy a single nappy. Thanks, Susan. Finally, Brian. Brian's with First Taste Baby Foods. What has happened to you both? Well, it's a beautiful miracle. And we at First Taste Baby Foods would like to wish you well. Now, having a baby can be a stressful time, and we would like to be the ones to help. You know what would help me? What's that? Wads of cash. <laughs> Wads of cash. Ah. Let me tell you a bit about my background. I am a dirty, miserable bastard. <laughs> and I'm famous for it. I come from a long line of tight arses. It's in my blood. And I'd like to think that when the wee fellow, when he grows up, he too will be a dirty, miserable bastard. <laughs> now, my good lady here, is Britain's oldest mother. Now, that's worth something. I know you know that. Free nappies, bibs, food, talcum. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Them they want to talk about money, they do. You're clearly a, a very shrewd man, Mr Mullen, so uh, I would like to revise our offer. How does this sound? A five-year advertising campaign fronted by you and your wife with your baby's image on every jar we sell. And from every jar we sell, we'll pay you one pence. One pence? One pence a jar? One pence a jar. How many jars do you sell a year? Twelve million. Can I borrow your calculator, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is no use. I can still hear it. It's like a bloody fire alarm. Me like a knife. Oh, I'm going to kill that bastard and the skinny wife when he gets back here. It's four hours. Let me do something. Why is it greeting like that? I don't know. Maybe it's shot itself. Well, I'm not getting involved in that. No, me neither. I went bang Isaac's door again. She'll love it today. I'm going to get the bottle. Is it? You know fine well what it is. Come and get a horn with this baby. It's pulling the place down. There, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, my wee lamb. Come on, me. Shh. Oh, Isa, you're a genius. <laughs> Jack, come see this. Jack. Jack. Jack, you're all right. That was a hell of a fright you gave me. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, no. There's nothing to apologise for. I thought you were dead in that kitchen. I don't know what happened. I just felt the lights going out. What's caused that, Doctor? Well, we don't know. We need to find out why he blacked out. Uh, we're going to put him in a ward, and the next thing will be an angiogram. A watergram? It's nothing to worry about yet, Mr Jarvis. We inject some dye and check that your valves are working. It's very routine. So is his heart? It might be. That's what we're going to find out. Now, I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse us. Mm. 
Factor. Factor. Yeah. Oh, how are you feeling? Oh, not bad. How long have you been sitting there? <laughs> Three hours. When you go up the road, you're like Greyfriars Bobby there. No, no, I'll stay with you. I'll not die on you. On you go. Right, I'll go to your house and I'll let myself in. And I'll get your jammers and that, you know. I'll get you food, a magazine, juice. I'll do you up a wee kit bag. Oh, and I'll bring your tranny. I'll come straight back. And jelly babies, you love them. It's ten o'clock at night, Victor. You can deal with that in the morning. No, I'll do it the night. You do the same for me. We've got to watch out for each other, Jack. We haven't got anybody else. I'll be away one hour. Thanks, Victor. No bother, Jack. Morning, Jack. Morning, Victor. <laughs> I know. I took a dizzy turn when I was leaving the hospital last night. I went down the stairs, he'd first. Boof! Unconscious. I never even made it to the bus stop. Oh, you stupid bastard. <laughs> so that's me with need jammies, need juice, and need jelly babies. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, well, I've bashed a couple of ribs and my wrist is humped. Oh, and here's the rub. I have to get one of the um, angiogram thingies and all. It's my fault. I shouldn't have pissed after the bookies and left them. I feel bad. No, if I'm just to blame, it's me. If I'd opened the door and taken away, then this might never have happened. One pence a jar. I should have pushed for two. You know what, you bastard? You're a ball head away from getting a boot in the stones, eh? There's the boys there lying up in hospital, and all you can think about is how much money you're going to make. Well, steady on, Winston. I'm worried about Jack and Victor and all. Selfish. But who, me? Hi, you. Who've I been selfish, Tam? Because I didn't want to drag the man into the tune in a freezing cold day. How is that selfish? I don't see why I'm getting the blame for all this. That way is your responsibility, Tam. It's only a week old and already you're dumping him off in folk. I have not dumped him in anybody. Jack and Victor are friends of mine. I trust them. I don't just go leaving my way in with anybody. Mr Mullen, your baby's gone off its knob and it totally won't stop crying. And I'll take it back to school. I'll stick his dummy in some about in a minute. <laughs> Away you go, you daft old poof. Hey. You couldn't handle going up the road yourself, so you threw yourself down the stairs at the hospital just so you could jump into the bed next to him. Shut your hole. So you've hid all your tests. Aye. It's just about lying here waiting now. Well, likes a grub. Dynamite. Aye, that boy Jamie Oliver comes in every day and cooks it fresh at the bottom of the bed. <laughs> Aye, he did me a big plate of scrambled egg this morning with a lovely thing all through. What was it called again? Superbug. Smashing. <laughs> it's a quick hour, isn't it? Yeah, you're not saying much, Tam. Ah, well, they, they two have been giving me it tight since I left the Wayne Mees. Ah, well, that's the end of that, then. These things happen. How are you getting on with that free stuff? Ah, they're talking about making an advert, putting me and Francis in it. Is that right? Mm. That's magic. Here, Jack. I've got this for you. Keep you warm the night. Hey, we've got blankets on here to keep them warm and I put that back in your pocket. Busted. Here, Hen, I've done them a couple of filled rolls. Would that be OK? That'll be fine. Hey, smash. Right. That's Azovsky. See you later. Afternoon, gentlemen. I have your angiogram results. If I could have a word with you first, Mr McDade. Oh, it's all right. You can speak in front of him, son. He's an old pal. Okay. Well, we've had a look at your tests and we've diagnosed you as a clumsy bugger. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with your heart. But what I would suggest is you make sure you're eating properly and uh, try not to do too much running around at your age. Right, old son. So, uh, I'm fit to go? Yes. I have a quick word with the nurse and you can go home. Right.
can't believe you're getting out. I can't believe you're no. What do you bypass? So when are they saying? Wednesday at two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. I've got a theory, you know. What's that? One in, one out. What are you talking about? Well, Tam and Francis, they've got the new baby. That's a new life in Craig Lang. And by my reckoning, that means some old duffer's got to check out. Make space for it. Some up the stairs making a balance. <sighs> Listen to yourself. You're not giving yourself the best possible chance worrying about garbage like that, are you? No, I'm worried, Victor. Listen, Jack. We've been through a lot of stuff together. A lot of hard shit in my time. But our time isn't done yet. This is, this is what the Yankees call a, a curveball. And if he's throwing you one new, Jack Jarvis, you've got to, you've got to bat it out of the park. Victor. Aye. Where is it you get all that shite? <laughs> Half all the crappy movies they show in the afternoon. <laughs> Wednesday, then. Wednesday. Oh, look. Will you listen, Fiona, darling? Look, take a telling. I don't want you here. No, there isn't any point. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, aye, but look, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing and I'll be back on the board before you know what's happened. Anyway, I've got Victor here. I know that. I'm, I'm no frightened, so that's all that matters, isn't it? Well, <laughs> well, you know me, I'll not die in my bloody bed. <laughs> right, as soon as I'm about myself, I'll... I'll give you a call. Now listen, darling, I don't want you worrying, right? OK. Right, well, kiss the boys for me. All right? OK. I love you too. Right, yeah. Right, well, that's my money. I'll see you later. All righty. Bye. What you's all wanting? Whiskey. I'll take a sherry, Tam. Kiss a lager. Put your money back in your pocket, Tam. No. Fiona. Oh, how you doing, darling? Where's my dad, Victor? He's not gone in yet. I didn't think you were coming. Jack says he tell you not he come. When did I ever listen to my dad, Victor? Dad? Oh, Fiona. I thought I told you to stay at home. How are you feeling? I'm just tired, darling. How long is the operation, Doctor? I can't really say. Generally, it's fairly routine, but I'll not kid you on. When the patient is this age, this procedure has a good deal more risk involved. Now, of course, we're going to do our best for him. But we really need to go. Don't worry. What well, I'm worried is my dad is old. Where the bloody hell are you going? I'm going to Jean, Victor. It's time. No, it's not. Sorry, darling. I kind of need him for a wee bit longer. Jack. Jack. Out of the way, Victor. No. Get down the stairs. Jack. 
Back off, ya spooky bitch. Come on, shut your eyes. <laughs> oh, Fiona, darling. Victor. Jackie boy, good to see you again. How are you feeling, Dad? Oh, I was right there. That was something else, that was. Where? Oh, yeah. Saw your mother. Ah, she was beautiful. She was young. That's the way I remember her. That's good, Dad. You called her a spooky bitch. What? Did you? Did I did not? Hey, you did. As if I'd call her that. When was this supposed to happen? Up there. I called you Mrs. a spooky bitch. Hey, you did, and then you shoved me down the stairs. You know your tits on morphine, Jack. <laughs> I'm Britain's oldest mum, and when you're that bit older, you're that bit wiser. And that's why the obvious choice for our baby... Tam Junior. ...has to be First Taste Original Organic Selection. First Taste. Still doing it after all these years. The old box. And cut. Great. Well done, you both. That was terrific. Thank you very so, much. So, um, when do the new jars hit the shelves, then? Oh, it'll be about three weeks. About the same time the advert's coming out. Uh, excuse me a second. Hello? What's wrong? Uh, you got paper? Paper. Give me the paper. What page? <laughs> oh, shit! Cut the lights on. That's us out of here. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I... I'll do it for half a pence a jar. 